Hello and welcome to Waves of YA, Ocean County Library's brand new podcast focused on young adult literacy brought to you by our teen literacy team. My name is Chichilia and I'll be your host for today. I'm a teen librarian at the Tom's River Branch and joining me today we have... Hi, I'm Allison. I'm also one of the teen librarians at the Tom's River Branch. My name is Courtney and I'm the teen librarian at the Stafford Branch. Hi, I'm and I am from the Lakewood Branch. Awesome. So today's episode is going to be Dive into YA, a virtual author series. We'll be focusing on a series of author visits that are happening virtually at the Ocean County Library in 2021. Discussing authors' new titles, what authors are visiting that we are excited about, and a little bit about the behind the scenes of how the series got started. So let's get started talking. So who are you guys most excited about visiting? What upcoming authors are you excited about in this series? Start with Allison. So I'm actually really excited for Elizabeth Lim. She's coming on Thursday, July 22nd, and the program starts at 6 p.m. And she wrote um, a duology, Spin the Dawn, and then the sequels Unraveled the Dusk. And it's this epic fantasy. There's a lot of Asian influences on it. Um, the main character is a seamstress, so she's doing embroidery and making clothes, but this is very much in my wheelhouse. So her new book um, that's coming out is Six, uh, Six Coons and Cranes, which takes place in the same world, which I think is like really a cool concept. And that's getting released in the beginning of July. And the tagline for that is a princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. So I also really enjoy Elizabeth Lim. She's written um, some of the Twisted Tale series from Disney. So they kind of take your favorite Disney fairy tales and they like mix them up and crazy things happen. And she wrote my favorite Disney movie, which is Cinderella. And that one is all about what happens if Cinderella never tried on the glass zipper, slipper at the end of the movie. So um, I'm just excited to see what she has to say. I totally understand that coming from you as a fantasy <laughs> person. I know you were really excited to get Laura Sebastian too. I know. Another, last uh, one. Yeah, another author of the fantasy world that I absolutely adore. So I'm just like, I want to find out like what other things she has cooking that's going to be coming out, what extra tidbits she can tell us. And she's from New York, so she might come in person uh, another time, maybe in the next couple of years. <laughs> Don't tease me. <laughs> what about you, Courtney? Okay, for me, it's got to be Megan McCafferty, just yes. because I've loved her work for 20 years. Um, I read her, her Jessica Darling series, The Sloppy First, and the other books when they came out when I was a teenager. And she's, she's also local. She writes about kids growing up in her fictional version of Ocean County and <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's just so much fun. Uh, I recently read The Mall by her, which yeah, that's is her latest one, right? I think so. Yeah, I think that's the most recent one that's come out and uh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but at this point it is historical fiction because it's set <laughs> in the 90s. Um, but it's, it hits that same note where it's, it, for me personally, because I grew up around here, it's got that nostalgia, of, you know, it sounds very, very much like my my teen years, but with added, you know, adventure and, and mystery and romance all taking place at the mall. Um, so, yeah, that's a great, fun and funny read. And I don't think that you have to be an Ocean County native to enjoy it. I think everybody can relate to going to the mall as a teen, too. Yeah. I'm just getting laughs there. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Uh, I'm excited for uh, Greg Neary. He did Grand Theft Horse. I had, it's a graphic novel, and I normally like read through them super fast, and I kept picking it up and putting it back down, and finally like, read through it and then couldn't put it down at all while I was reading it. Uh, it's actually, a, it's a biography about his cousin, who 
was the first person since the 1850s, I believe, to be charged with grand theft horse. Uh, she stole this, so my grass was happening, um, a horse, but she was also part owner and the trainer for the horse. And it was all the legal battles uh, that she was going through because the other owners that had the money to finance the horse, uh, it's a racehorse, were trying to get the horse back. And she's like, you're going to run it to death. Like, it's already injured. So she's trying to save the horse's life. Um, and it was really interesting to read. Uh, I don't know a lot about horses at all. So I learned a lot about, like, the culture. Like, I knew um, but, like, just service level stuff. It was really interesting. Uh, so I want to hear him speak about that and, like, his experience of, like, this is my cousin that I haven't seen in years. And she's like, by the way, I got arrested for horse theft <laughs> in the 2000s. Uh, so that's exciting. I can't wait for that. And then I'm excited for A.S. King. I just finished reading Switch, her newest book. Oh, well, listening to it. I do mostly audiobooks. Um, I went to college out by Reading, so I've seen her speak before, and she was phenomenal. It was super interesting. Um, this one fits so well. Like, it was timed really well about, like, isolation and being alone and feeling like you're alone and, like, what to do when time stops. And she, in the um, author's notes, mentioned she started writing it back in 2018, so it was, like, pre-pandemic and just timed really well, where we all spent a year feeling like we were alone and the time had stopped. Uh, so it was really phenomenal like, and moving. The description is like, it's about a track meet. It's not. It's about isolation. It's so good and so timely. Nice. And she always writes kind of like weird, speculative, kind of bizarre stuff in her, in her stuff. Did you find that <laughs> in this one too? Oh, yeah. Um, this one, because I haven't read a few in between. Like I read Ask the Passengers and then Please Ignore Very Deep because that was the one she was talking about when I saw her in college. Um, so I feel like it's gotten a little bit weirder, but some of it might have just been because that feeling of isolation is so weird and also like really hit home right now. So part of it is like, we have gone very bizarre, but also like it makes perfect sense with what everything just happened. Awesome. Um, are there any like books that the authors have written that you like completely fell in love with or any upcoming books from any of the authors in the series that really are looking forward to? I fell in love with Alatsue by Darcy Little Badger. I love that. I think I've yeah. been talking that up to like everyone I've known. <laughs> and I regret you have been talking about this book since the beginning of the year. And I regret that it took me so long to actually fold and read it because like, so good. Like you shouldn't have given me a choice to tell you. You literally should have. <laughs> Force me to read. I, I think now everyone in the office has pretty much read it. So I'm really excited for that one. I thought that was a really cool concept that she created a world like ours with magic, and she spent so much time focusing on like her um, Lipin Apache heritage and culture and incorporating their myths and legends and how they would view magic into this world. Like I, I want her to write either sequels or other books in that world. I just, I fell in love. It's a new one coming out, I believe in the fall or the end of the summer, uh, A Snake Falls to Earth, which uh, again, focuses on Limpid and Patchy folklore. So I'm excited about that one. The cover for that just got released too. <laughs> What about you, Courtney? I was pleasantly surprised uh, when I read Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil because I don't normally read kind of like, it's got like that thriller, like it's, it's violent and kind of like dark humor. And that's not normally what I go to, but uh, Murder Trending, the idea is that it's this dystopian near future where the death penalty has been outsourced to what's basically a reality show. Uh, and Very like Running Man. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, the main character is uh, a teenage girl named Dee, and she gets hastily convicted of her stepsister's murder and ends up on Alcatraz 2.0. And she has to try and survive, where what they do is they let serial killers go on the island and kill people 
to you know enact justice is the idea um and it is televised or it's it's on an app there's a lot of stuff that's a little bit like oh it's an app and it's got spikes instead of likes and it, it takes a little bit to get immersed in it but uh, it was actually it was a lot of fun it was very much kind of a a summer teen horror movie in book form i can totally see that as like a tv show or like streaming or whatever <laughs> and the teens love murder <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely got the the gore any you're excited about or any you read chris i know you talked about switch that you just read um i also read punching the air and uh the last name is the boy and i cannot remember the first name and i wrote it down somewhere unhelpful he needs um, a boy thank you yes um and i it's a book and verse so it's super fast read, and I did actually read this one instead of listening to it, and it was phenomenal. It's it's basically a fictionalization of the uh, Exonerated Five, where they had gotten wrongfully arrested um, for a murder that they didn't commit, and then were later on exonerated, but set during set more modern day, and then it was just so moving and like phenomenal. Um, I read it super fast um and it's i cannot remember the main character's name it's I'm okay so, <laughs> I'm, so bad, I'm bad with names um but he gets arrested and you get his perspective while he's in a juvenile detention center and it goes back and forth between like what's happening to him there and then his past and him being in school and how he was being pro like he was in a higher level arts program but he was still being profiled as like the bad kid, even though he wasn't. That's just how the teachers saw him because he was from a lower income area and he was black. Uh, so you saw he was getting profiled his whole life for no reason. Um, he was racist, but saw that he was being profiled and how it affected him and how he was just minding his own business, skateboarding, and trying to hang out and like, stay out of trouble. He ended up getting arrested for something he didn't do. Um, and it's just, it's a phenomenal book. I think that's either one stuff or all her stuff. I read Pride by her, which is a remix of Pride and Prejudice, kind of set in modern day New York, about the gentrification of, um, oh gosh, I forget what area the main character lives in, but it's like a new family that moves in that's like on the richer side. And, you know, the, the entire plot of Pride and Prejudice <laughs> just kind of, falls through but in modern day so um so what have you guys been enjoying most about the authors that have come so far any any insights of i love meeting everybody's dogs so when laura posted she showed all her two dogs uh cersei and neville so it's been really fun like that's not something if people the authors came to do an in-person event they wouldn't yeah, bring their dogs, they're not bringing their dogs <laughs> to everybody so i like seeing everybody's like bookshelf in the background and like their their like author visits areas in their house whether that's like their office or like a different room or whatever that's been fun that a lot of them have like I know Crystal, which was our first author, Crystal Maldonado, she had like these extravagant lights behind her and it was like a, it's like a whole scenario behind her. <laughs> like it looked expensive, but it probably wasn't. <laughs> and I feel like Steve Shankin just hosted us in his like office where he like writes and does research. Like, <laughs> like, like Laura Sebastian, she made sure she had a bookcase behind her. Same thing with Crystal, like making sure like that things are a little bit more fancy. Same thing with Sandaya, like fancy bookcase. And uh, Steve, you could just see his like wall of notes behind him, which I thought was really cool because he is a nonfiction author that he has to actually do like the research bit that. So for him, shelf space, wall space is more important for him to be able to have his notes laid out rather than having copies of books and stuff. I love that about uh, Steve's visit. It really seemed like 
we were getting such a just a view into the process he goes through and i think there's some advantages to people being in a space that they're comfortable and you get a, a very natural conversational presentation from the author sometimes and that's that's really valuable And they can show off a lot more too. Like even when Molly Oster tagged at her, she's like, oh, let me show you this. And then she just screen shared her computer screen. And she's like, oh, this is like work in progress. Like this is like the edits I got back from my editor. Like that's not really something that people always come prepared for during like an in-person visit versus it comes up in the conversation. They're like, oh, I have that on my computer. Let me show you. Yeah, I love seeing like all her in process work too. I thought that was really interesting to look at. Did you learn anything about the authors from the visits that have been going on so far? I know you had a conversation with uh, Laura Allison about baking. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Laura uh, has moved to London. So she did want to make sure she got in early for the call just in case there was any issues getting things connected, especially with her being international. So she got in early and then the two of us just had a very cool conversation about her dogs, her bacon, her living in London. So like that was something I felt was really special, especially considering she's probably one of my favorite authors. So it was definitely a- uh, You had something in common too. Exactly, it was, it, it was a very cool moment. Uh, for Laura Sook Duncombe, uh, Allison was moderating it. I felt like I was like interrogating her because I had so many questions because she did a Pirate's Life for She. And I love pirates, like have read a ton of nonfiction pirate books and fiction and had just finished watching Lost Pirate Kingdom on Netflix where she was one of the people talking. And I was like, she's coming to our library. I can <laughs> ask her a million questions then. Uh, so like her talking about her research and like that she just, goes to the islands and just finds those little like tiny thing like paperback books that are just sold, sold in gift shops of like here's a little bit of local history and I'm like I need to go to all the islands <laughs> buy all of these so I can read like your original sources. Yeah like hearing all of because everybody has different process of how they write whether it's you know they do an outline or they just kind of you know well, let's see what's going on. <laughs> And such different relationships with their editors, too. Like, um, Steve doing nonfiction, apparently his editor made a comment, it would be great if you could release a book once a year. And he's like, 18 months. It takes me 18 <laughs> months. So it's been nice to see what people are working on, too. Like, things that they might not really have fully released to their website or social media that you kind of are getting like tidbits and teasers for upcoming things that are coming out too. And I know some authors have been like, well, I have an idea for this one thing. I can't talk about it, but you know, you'll see in, you know, two years sometimes because <laughs> that's how long the book takes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about behind the scenes. I know Alice and I kind of have a little bit more knowledge about that because we sort of organized these visits. Um, so how did we decide who would visit and what was that process like? So do you want to start, Allison? We'll sure. Kind of um, it was a lot of asking. So it was just a matter of thinking about authors that we know the teens come in asking for or books that go out on the sh go out or things when we do book talk them during summer reading, um, everybody gets excited for. Yeah, things that are popular and well liked. Um, and then just starting asking people, we also try really hard to make sure that we, um, I love fantasy books, as proven by both Elizabeth Lynn and Laura Sebastian, who I can't stop talking about, um, that we asked other people besides <laughs> the authors we actually were like uh enjoy and we made sure that there was the various genres like steve shanking does nonfiction. we made sure that there was some authors like katie zhao who has had children's books come out and now she's writing ya and people like julie murphy who's wrote in ya and now they're writing some adult books so like a range of not just YA only authors, but also authors who's written in other 
age groups, and then genres too. We also work to make sure we got some debut authors. So like yes. Darcy Little Badger, Lots Away was her first book. Crystal Mabia, Ma, oh, I can't say her last name. And Maldonado. <laughs> Her first book was That Chance, Charlie Vega. I love that book. <laughs> so good. Um, Pamela and Harris, her first book is um, When You Look Like Us, which is also phenomenal. It's a mystery, really cool concepts, um, highly recommend it. And then we got um, kind of staples <laughs> with A.S. <laughs> King and Julie Murphy and um, Megan McCaffrey and PC and Crispin Cass. That's coming up on Thursday. I guess when this releases, it will have already happened. <laughs> yeah, so like just making sure that, that everybody who is coming and that it's people who are up and coming, but also people like PC and Crispin Cass who have been writing YA for a oh, long right. time. <laughs> like adults who grew up reading them would be like, maybe interested in coming back and listening to them. Um, and this is a teen and adult series. We kind of decided um, to focus on, you know, promoting to educators and promoting to teens uh, themselves too. Because YA isn't just for teens. Yes. <laughs> so do we want to kind of go through all the authors and kind of book talk their latest titles or anything we're excited about? Yeah, I think that sounds like a fun idea. Okay, do you, um, we could start at the top and then kind of all go into conversation sort of <laughs> mode. Um, so Crystal Maldonado was our first author back in April and um, her book was, her debut book was Fat Chance Charlie Vega, which was an own voices, uh, body positivity, sort of like a sweet romance, kind of about Crystal finding herself, um, getting her into her first relationship. Uh, her father has passed away. She's dealing with a kind of overbearing mother who is constantly wants her to lose weight. So, you know, trying to find positivity in her own self and gaining confidence in herself and I thought it was a really cute book. If you like love like sweet romances, it was definitely like top of my list. And her new book, I think, comes out. I want to say next year. She talked a little bit about it. That one sounds amazing. It's about a plus size girl who kind of ends up sort of catfishing some people, <laughs> and it is also a romance. So she was also really awesome to work with. The audio for Fat Chance, Charlie Vega, was awesome. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I listen to it. I love audiobooks. So anything I basically read by any of the authors besides Molly Alstertag, who writes graphic novels, was an audiobook. <laughs> um, has anybody read Sindaya Menon's stuff? I know I have. <laughs> I have, too. Okay. She has her dimple verse and then her new series. I think that's more on your level, Allison. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Ros uh, Rosetta Academy. They're retellings of um, like classic fairy tales, but in a very modern way. And it's really not um, too much fantasy, but they're really cute rom coms. Her first book is of Curses and Kisses, which is kind of a real telling of beauty and Beast, and then she has another one. Her second book is coming, and that series is coming out, I want to say, this fall, maybe? It might have come out. Uh, was it of Princes and Promises? Yes. Oh, my God. You're so amazing. I could only see the cover in my head, which doesn't help anybody in a podcast. It came out at the beginning of this month. Okay. Yeah, because I think I, I follow her on social media, so I see her stuff come up and I was like oh she's there are like nine images of this book I'm assuming it's either coming out soon or <laughs> it's already out so and that's a retelling of like the frog prince so then Laura Sebastian <laughs> I love her. So she, her, she princess right 
Yeah, so her book, uh, Ash Princess is the first book in her trilogy. And it's all about um, Thea, she's 16 years old. Um, her mother used to be king, queen of their country and then invaders came um, when she was six. Her mother was murdered and she's been held captive um, by the invaders. And anytime her people act out, she receives punishment. So this is really all about her coming to terms with living with the people who are oppressing her, but also trying to get her country back and escape this um, less than desirable living situation. It's amazing. And she has two other books that are supposed to be coming out this year. So she's supposed to be having of six of Sick and Shadows come out in July, which is an adult fantasy book. And it's a retelling of like Camelot, which I am like so excited for. I feel like a lot of retellings of Camelot have come out like semi recently. <laughs> I don't know. I know uh, Kirsten White had the the Guinevere deception. That series was coming out. So I, I don't know. Like, as soon as something comes out, I feel like eight other books that are very similar to that end up coming out. Um, so we had Steve Shankin at the end of May. Um, he writes, like, nonfiction stuff. I can take this one, too. So his most... <laughs> recent book was uh born to fly which was about um women aviators during the 1920s and they used to do um air races so they would start in one part of the country and then in their planes they would travel across country and then there would be certain air um, fields that they would stop at at every night and then whoever won the race got the prizes um, but the crazy thing is that because of how the planes were set up, they were like open cockpit. You really weren't flying that high. They didn't have great like navigation systems. So most of the pilots would like have a roadmap that they would be holding in their open cockpit, trying to find the map on the road that they're flying over to make sure that they meet their destination. So you really got to feel for like these crazy um things that these women had to go through to accomplish this. And it was the first and only women's Aries that had ever been held because then you got into the 1930s and with the Great Depression, there really wasn't money. So it was a really interesting book. And he's um, wrote a lot of nonfiction books. And he talked to us about his next book that's coming out, which is about um, spies during the Cold War, which also sounds very exciting. <laughs> You can't really go wrong with spies no. and like children's or teen nonfiction. Um, Molly Ostertag, her new one is a YA book, but she's written J books. Uh, the Witch Boy series, which I didn't know when she was talking about. She just wanted it to be a one shot, like just a one off uh, graphic novel. Uh, so. It kind of deals with gender norms. The main character is Asher, I believe. And he is a boy that grows up in this like magic family. Like it's just, magic is a part of their family, but uh, witches are girls and shapeshifters are boys. But Asher is more drawn to like witchcraft. And he realizes he's the only one that could help when his like male cousins start going missing. So there's each book in the series kind of deals with like a different kind of little adventure. And then her new one is The Girl from the Sea, which is a sapphic selkie romance, which I was totally sewed on. I literally bought it the day she, <laughs> she came. So that was pretty awesome. And I like seeing her like work in progress stuff. She was our last one. So she's like fresh on my mind. <laughs> um. Did anybody read the House of Night by PC and Kristen Cast? Those books? I did. <laughs> you did? <laughs> when I was a teen. Uh, yeah, they were cool. They very much came right, out. Like sort of in the height of the vampire craze. Yes, yeah, so I was about to say that. They were very <laughs> much in the height of the vampire craze. Um, if you like YA vampire books, like I highly recommend you read them if you haven't. It's a really great series. The characters are awesome. 
I'm excited for um, Spells Trouble. That is on my to-read list from them. I, When I was researching for them, apparently that uh, House of Night got picked up to be a TV show from the producers of Shadowhunters. Wow. That series, yeah. So they're looking for a network right now. Um, and I watched them do an interview with, like, the producer that picked them up, and they kind of, like, were interrogating him about, oh, have you read the books? And he was like, of course I've read the books. <laughs> like, not a lot of producers, like, actually read the books that they're they're looking to make into a production. So that was kind of funny to watch that happen. That and, actually explains why so many books, when they get turned into things, are, like, hardly, like, the book at all. Anything yeah. like it. It's, like, maybe vaguely the notes of it. <laughs> um, but the other thing I thought was interesting is House of Night got turned into a graphic novel series. So I, like, immediately when I found that out, I was like, well, I gotta check these out. So, and we have them on Hoopla, which is awesome. We have the entire series. Um, and their next book, I mean, if you haven't guessed by the title, Spells Trouble is about witches. <laughs> uh, so then we talked a little bit about Megan McCaffrey. Do you want to talk a little bit more about uh, maybe your first experience reading Megan McCaffrey, Courtney? I cannot really because uh, it was literally 20 years ago, probably. But I remember... Uh, getting the books and probably buying the books, which was kind of a big deal to actually get to own them. And uh, that first series, the Jessica Darling series, starts with Sloppy First, and then it goes through five books covering the main character's life, basically from high school through college. And then it wraps up. It's a really great conclusion to the series. So, oh, I love it, when that happens. Yeah, it, <laughs> satisfying. Yes, it's it wraps it up nicely, what without without betraying the the realism throughout the series because you know you make friends, you lose friends, you fall in love and you break up and you lose contact and it, it's really it's so true to life to all of that, but it still has a really nice ending. So I I recommend that. And she actually did um, after that series. She wrote uh, the It List series, which I think there are two or three in. And the basic premise of that is it's like she got to do a middle school AU of her of her characters. So it's kind of a prequel in that same universe. And that one actually, they made a movie of that. So that, that's, that's awesome. pretty cool, too. Um, so there's a lot of, she's got a lot of books. And uh, like I said, the... The new one, The Mall, I felt was really solid, too. So. I, I know she updated the Jessica Darling series to make it, like, more relevant for 2020. Are you going to, do you think you'll reread the updated series, Courtney? I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> yeah, this, that's interesting that she decided to do that. I... I, I wonder if you could, like, compare and contrast them and see, like, are, like, the attitudes of teens different from, like, when she first wrote it to, like, now? Or is it, like, just maybe she just inserted technology and that, like, aspect changes the storyline? I wonder if that, like, changes the plot of things either. So maybe we could do, like, a whole episode on that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Judy Bloom updated... Um... Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Oh, she did. She did not like drastically, but because it was so old, like all the feminine products were like super, super out of date. So, like, te like preteen girls, like reading it, like that's not what they're going to experience. So, she updated that aspect of it, of like what it's like to go through puberty and like the feminine products. So, like, I read like I think my mom's copy, and like the newer stuff has like it doesn't have like the belt. On the pads. I remember that. Oh my gosh, I yeah. had like a vivid memory to reading that. Yeah, I was like, what is this belt thing? And my mom's like, that hasn't existed in a million years. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so like she, I don't know when, because I've read it late 90s. So 
so sometime between the late 90s and now, they've updated it to be more modern in that aspect. I don't know if they updated anything else, but I know that got changed. Well, that makes so much sense to update that, because if you're, like, a girl nowadays reading that, but like you just said, like, nothing would make sense to you. And even your mom is like, yeah, I don't know what that is either. <laughs> of, like, girls nowadays. Um, and then we talked a little bit about Elizabeth Lim. Um, so her new book, uh, Six Crimson Cranes, which I'm excited about the shape-shifting dragon, I'll be honest. She actually, yeah, she did a commercial for us in our last episode, which was really cool. So we're hoping to get more commercials like that from other authors. Um, Katie Zhao, which I have seen so much hype about her debut YA because she wrote the Dragon Warrior series, which is a series of J books. Um, and her new one is described as Crazy Rich Asians meets One of Us is Lying, which that already had me sold. Those are two things I absolutely love. Uh, it's called How We Fall Apart, and it is like a dark academia book. See, book. I believe it's supposed to be a series, because on Goodreads it says number one <laughs> in the <laughs> series. So uh, murder in a boarding school. So there's all those different like boarding school series where something happens in a boarding school, like Gossip Girl, very like that. Secrets, you know. <laughs> I'm super excited about that. Uh, I've been following her on Instagram and she does like great reels and such every day promoting her books, her new book. So I think it's going to be like huge, especially with all the teens that love murder. <laughs> um. Speaking of murder, Gretchen McNeil with hashtag murder trending is the next one, which Courtney talked a little bit about. Um, was there anything like you particularly like really enjoyed about like either her writing style or about the book or series itself? Any highlights? I really enjoyed the main character. She's very, she's stuck in this situation. She absolutely is not in any way, wasn't prepared to be in this situation, but she absolutely steps up and goes, you know what, I'm not going to just die without trying to do something to avoid it. So she uh, just puts up a really, a really good fight and is very clever and determined, and, and I really enjoyed that. Because sometimes you get the main character who is just you know, she's like a machine, like a, a battle ninja robot warrior or whatever. And she's not like that. She's just a regular person who is in this really bad situation, but is determined to do what she can to get out of it. Yeah, I love when main characters actually kind of have a backbone and like a personality too sometimes. I feel like sometimes authors do a lot of either self-insert, but a lot of why recently have been like, oh, uh, I know, Allison, you read a book that you described to me as like you didn't like the main character and you were like i like that i don't like her <laughs> because uh, uh the, the shadows the shadows between, between us by trisha levenseller like she's just like like not a nice person <laughs> she's not a good person and she makes no bones about trying to be a good or nice person to like appease other people like she just, that's so interesting too yeah, she's just living her life and like screwed the rest of the world so all right and then beginning of september we have kit frick uh i killed zoe spanos has anybody else read that besides me okay i'll sell it to you guys <laughs> It, it was described as a retelling of Rebecca. So the main character kind of is like going about her life. And then this um, couple hires her as a nanny to uh, for the summer. And it turns out she looks a lot like their last nanny who has been missing for like a while. <laughs> so she kind of, it's about her like going through through the summer and figuring out like did I know this person like what's my connection to her and like 
I think the the connection with Rebecca, which is uh, a Daphne Du Moines book, is kind of like this mysterious person who has either died or gone missing that you're like connected to, but you don't really know like what her life was actually about. And there's been like a trend with a lot of YA books that have like podcast elements to it. So the the babysitter that's missing her friend is doing a podcast about her being missing. So there's I didn't I actually read this one surprisingly <laughs> as an arc, but uh, I've heard the the audiobook is really really good for this one. And that's uh, Kit Frick's uh, latest. Um, has anybody read Julie Murphy? Not Which the newest part? one, though. What I read the Dumpling. first one. Dumpling? Yes, Dumpling. Okay. Which is a Netflix movie. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> With Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her new one is, I think, I think the last one set in the dumpling verse, which I think is what she calls all her books that kind of are interconnected, which is pumpkin. So she was one of the like popular well-known ones we got. Yeah. So Yeah, I really enjoy her her characters are so they're complex ca characters, they've got a lot going on and um I mean, the hook in Dumpling is just so, so much fun. It's, you've got this teenage girl who uh, is, she's fat. She is not what people think of as a, a beauty queen and her mom who is obsessed with the small town beauty pageant thing. And uh, she herself, she doesn't, she doesn't have like a bad self-esteem or anything. She loves herself how she is. She just is very aware that she's not fitting what her mom's idea of this this ideal is and decides that she's going to she's going to enter and she's going to win and she's going to show her mom you know that there's room for people like her everywhere i think it's been a while since i've read it i might be missing a plot point or two here but i just remember really really enjoying it it's it really felt very empowering to me you, I think, hit the nail on the head, Courtney. Yeah, good description. A lot of moms and body positivity. Like, Crystal's book had a lot of that, too. So, <laughs> I think it's a common thing in teens. So, in the beginning of October, we have Greg Neary. I know we talked a little bit about um, Grand Theft Horse. Uh, he also has Ghetto Cowboy, which is an older book. But it just got turned into a Netflix movie called Concrete Cowboy, which is like Ghetto Cowboy is a, I think it's a YA book, but the movie is rated R, which is kind of bizarre to me. <laughs> it's oh. Netflix. The ratings don't matter anyway. You're going to watch it. You don't get ID. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, he's written mostly like nonfiction stuff, right, Allison? No? Okay, I'm completely no. wrong. <laughs> the only no, nonfiction book is Grand Theft Taurus. Okay, I think it's I was thinking of just telling a story about his cousin. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, because I got super into Grand Theft Taurus once I finally read it, I started like digging through all of his other stuff and like interviews and like his website where people will be like, hey, did you know about like this area in like inner city Philly where they have like this horse riding program. So all this stuff seems to be based in like real events or like a real like program yeah. or organization. Like, so he's coming from like, all right, well this exists, this is real. And now I'm going to make it my own and then write a fiction story based on this real thing. Yeah. Like inspired to write based on a thing that yeah. exists actually um and then we have evie's a boy you talked about punching the air um yes. talked a little bit about pride she has an i believe her next book is a picture book coming out um so i i think that actually comes out in october so i think she was excited to promote that um 
And then we have Pamela N. Harris, who I haven't read her book, but I, it's like on my very long list of things to read. <laughs> um, has I anybody, you did? Yeah. Okay. So um, the main character, Jay, um, they live in the not great part of town. They are African-American. Um, his sister, Nick, is dating the neighborhood like drug dealer, and she ends up going missing. And um, Jay is trying to find her, and he has gotten a lot of pushback from people um, about his sister. Like, oh, she probably just ran off, or she's just like, she's troubled because of who she associates with and the way she looks. So he is trying really hard to find her to make sure that she's safe. And it's, it's, it's great. It's great. It, there's like a nice mystery aspect to it that you're not quite sure if something bad happened to the sister, if she decided just to take off for a while. So you're not quite sure. And everything is Jay trying to be like a good brother and look out for his sister. So. And she's one of our debut authors too. So I'm excited to get some insight of uh, being a debut author too. And then uh, at the towards mid November, we have Darcy Little Badger, which uh, we kind of all vaguely have read a let's way or at least heard of it. It's um, so good. It is. Uh, did you listen to the audio? I listened to the audio. Um, I very rarely read read books because I'm so busy. Or if it's not a graphic novel, I'm going to listen to it instead. Uh, and I really liked the audio on it. Uh, it was. I loved it too. I was like, I, I, that problem where you only see words written down. You're like, how do I say this? So now it's the opposite problem. Of like, I don't know what this looks like spelled, but like, I know how to say it correctly at least. <laughs> <laughs> written book though there's little illustrations at the start of each chapter so i recommend that you at least like take the physical copy beautiful. And you through so you can see the illustrations they are they're beautiful they're it's so nice i really appreciate it because um the main character, Elle, her ability is to summon ghost animals, is the best way I can describe it. And she wants to become a, oh God, I can't remember what the, di what, like, that research is dinosaurs. Paleontology? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she wants to do that. And I was like, oh, ghost dinosaurs? That sounds amazing. <laughs> oh. And her grandmother has the same ability and she rides a ghost woolly mammoth to like the grocery store. I thought that was like the greatest thing <laughs> that I have ever heard. Uh, there's like fairies and vampires and like ghost dogs. She has a ghost dog named Kirby that used to be her dog in real life. And then he, he like, she summons him. And then it has a lot to do with like limp and Apache folklore and mythology. So I, it, it was just like it hit all the like check marks. There was a mystery too because her cousin ends up uh, dying and then she finds out he's murdered. So it kind of like, I love like supernatural stuff, speculative fiction and mysteries. So it like hit every box. <laughs> I listened to it in a day. I was like, this is it. Like I started, I was like, I can't do anything else today. Like I thankfully did not have plans. It was the weekend. So I'm like, this is my day now. I'm gonna clean my apartment and listen to this book. <laughs> She did such a perfect job of incorporating the the magic in, in creating a world that is like our world today, but has magic. Like I always really appreciate that with like urban fantasy authors when they actually like they think it through. So like what caused magic to like take place in our world or like how would this slightly change this? And she just did such a beautiful job that like when you were reading the book and you stopped, you almost forgot that like our world doesn't actually have magic and I would be disappointed. <laughs> I What I really appreciated about the book is the main character is asexual and that's only mentioned like very briefly once in a conversation because she gets invited to someone's wedding and they, 
they say like, oh, you could bring a date. Oh, I know you're ace, so, you know, you don't have to. And it's just like, you know, a thing. <laughs> like, it doesn't get really heavily handed in, brought up, but, you know, it's just part of who she is. <laughs> um, and then we, the last person we have coming is A.S. King. We talked a little bit about her, her latest one. Um, any classic A.S. Kings that have really, like, wow, this is super bizarre and weird? Uh, what did I, I just read? read? Uh, <laughs> um, I read Ask the Passengers, uh, which it, I didn't feel like it was super bizarre, um, where the main character is, like, trying to figure out her sexuality. Um, and one of the things she does is, like, sit outside on her, like, picnic table and she'll watch the planes because I forget where she lives, but she lives near an airport. Um, and she'll watch the planes and she'll just wish and hope for good things for the people on the plane. And she'll like put out that good energy to them. And then it'll just periodically cut to like random other perspectives. And it's always a passenger on one of the planes. And like what good things happen because of D. The main character's name is D. Um, wishing for good things to happen to them or like they were in a bad mood, but now like they're just like, oh, it's okay. Um, so like that was like the only really like weird element in that one. And it was just kind of like, this is happening. This main character has the power to like, wish good vibes at people and they like receive them while they're on a plane, uh, which I really liked. I was just like this nice little, like there's a little bit of magic. And like, everyone can have like a little bit of magic by just being nice. <laughs> uh, and the other... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, the other one I read was Please Ignore Vera Deep, which was, I read it when it was like first coming out and she was coming to speak to my college, um, which I don't remember anything super magical. There's a ghost. Um, but I remember because I was living out by Reading and going into Reading because it was like the middle of nowhere where my college was being like, I know where all these things are. Like there is a random pagoda in the middle of Reading that was shipped here from Japan brick by bit brick um, back in the twenties. And like, they would talk, like, she would talk about all these things, and I'm like, I literally just discovered this place exists, like, three years ago when I moved out here. So that, like, that one is a murder mystery. And, like, she's getting clues, Veridice is getting clues, or is Veridice the dead one? Veridice is getting clues from her dead friend to solve his death and what happened around his death. So, like, you just kind of have, like, periodic ghosts happening. And she's one of those authors that I feel like has a large, like, collection of books. Like, she's been around for, or she's either been around for a while or she writes a lot. I like, feel like she has a new book every year because there's um, Still yeah. Life with Tornado, Reality Boy. Dig. Um, Dig. Like, there's a ton. And I just feel like every time I turn around, I'm like, oh, this, she's got another book that I didn't know was coming out. One of those authors, you're like, how do you have the time to write all of these I feel like Sundaya Mena is like that too. I'm like, she's written like <laughs> a lot. And then she has novellas and other stuff coming out. And uh, she ha actually had, um, uh, when Diplomat Brushney turned into a Netflix series, but it was in Hindi, that it was called Mismatched, which is it's on my list of things to watch at some point. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Be sure to check out the Ocean County Library's website for more podcasts and events. All titles mentioned today in today's episode can be found through the Ocean County Library, free with your library card. If you would like to email the podcast team to answer any of your readers' advisory questions, please reach out to wavesofya at gmail.com. Until next time, happy reading.